Dinky Dinky. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I got a glass of wine and I'm wearing an apron, which can only mean one thing. We're making tomato sauce. When I was a kid, I was a very picky eater. In fact, most of my family used to call me Picky Nicky, and yes, they still do to this day. But one of the things that I used to eat, even as a kid, was marinara sauce. You know, just a nice canned marinara sauce over spaghetti. That was it, but I used to eat that at least. Now, these days, I still love a good tomato sauce. I mean, who doesn't? But that stuff out of a can is just really not for me anymore. What I like to do is make my own. Today, I am showing you my world-famous marinara sauce. And let me guarantee you, it is 100 times better than anything you're gonna find in a can. You just wait. Let's get started. So to get started, all we need is a nice big pot. Now I do have this great cast iron one with an enamel finish, which I love. It's one of those things when you get married, you get a lot of fun things like this. But any pot will do. Just make sure it's big enough because we are really going to be filling this with a lot of great things. To get started, we're just going to add a tablespoon of olive oil in. Some people would add a little bit more, but I'm going to try to keep this on the light side. So a tablespoon is really all we need. on about medium, medium high. I'm gonna let that start going and I'm gonna get our onions. I've got one really large yellow onion here. Yellow onion, Spanish onion, any of those will work. You just don't want like a Vidalia onion or anything too sweet. Now I got a really big one here. Uh, if you can't find something that big, what you wanna think is about two and a half cups worth of onion. And the party has begun. You hear that little sizzle? Now we want these to get really nice and translucent, really nice and soft. Uh, we don't want them to get brown, so that's why you don't want to keep our heat too high. If you find they're starting to get brown or they're starting to really stick to the bottom of your pot, turn down your heat a little bit. All right, most importantly, our garlic. This is a time that I extremely urge you to not be shy with your garlic. I've got eight large cloves here. And when I say large, I mean the big ones on the outside of that garlic clove. If you don't have eight big ones, you know, put in more and more and more. I don't think you can have too much. This is a simple sauce. So we want each ingredient to be really big and really bold. So eight cloves of garlic, just nicely chopped up. So we really want these to cook up nicely together. So this is really the base flavor of our sauce. And onions and garlic, well, there's just no better marriage than that. Now what I like to do is really season each step as I go along. So I'm gonna put in a good amount of salt here, let's say maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm just gonna actually knock the heat back a tiny bit to a real solid medium flame. I find that with these apartment stoves, you gotta really look at the flame to know what's a medium because I can turn this thing sometimes up to like four different degrees and nothing happens. So I've got a little bit of a lower flame here, just a nice medium, and I'm gonna leave those alone because I got some tomatoes to work on. Now, what you're looking for is just a nice plum tomato. Uh, you can get no salt added or salt. I like to add my own salt in, but there's nothing wrong if you buy the salty kind. You just wanna be a little bit more cautious with the amount of salt you put in. You wanna taste a little bit more. Now, there's definitely some great tomatoes in there. San Marzano tomatoes, everybody knows, they're definitely the best. I just find that they're really expensive, especially in Manhattan. And if you cook this right, and you really let everything do what it should do, yeah, I think you can get away with a slightly cheaper tomato. So I'm just using something that I found at the grocery store. Now these are 28 ounce cans, so I'm gonna use three of them. Sometimes you can find the slightly bigger size, and then maybe you wanna use two. But I like to make a lot because I like a lot of sauce and once you get this done, you can use it for so many things. So this is where we get our hands dirty and the apron really comes into play. What I wanna do is I wanna open up each one of these plum tomatoes and inside, you're gonna find all these little things right in the center. It's kind of like a green part, some tomato pulp on the outside. We just want to take that out and discard it. Now the reason for this is because people say that those inner parts, the stem, is a little bitter and it's going to make your sauce bitter. I don't know if this is true or not, 
But a very wise woman told my husband that, and I believe her. So what I do is I take them out. Now there's also some basil leaves I put in the canned tomatoes. I'm really not sure why. We're gonna put basil in later, but I don't like it in now because that leaf is gonna turn into nothing or maybe even a bad something by the end of this cooking process. Now that I've removed most of my stems, there's nothing left to do but to get nice and dirty. We're gonna get our hands right in here. And this is why I'm wearing an apron, because I guarantee you one of these tomatoes is gonna squirt its insides all over me. Wow, that sounds really bad. <laughs> what you wanna do is just give these a really, really good squeeze. What we're doing is we're breaking this all up and we're gonna have a really kind of chunky sauce here. If you wanted at this point, you could puree this, you know, put an immersion blender in here and make it a little bit silkier. Um, I don't know, I kinda like it rustic. So I'm just gonna give it a nice big squeeze and when it seems pretty, you know, not too chunky, I'm gonna add it to that big old pan over there. At this point, you definitely wanna turn up your heat because we got a lot going on in there. We're gonna go to like a nice medium high. As a funny side note, if you ever cook your onions and garlic and let them cook up and yet cool back down, like say you're not ready for them and you turn off the flame, like I've done in the past, they'll actually turn a very bright shade of green. It's some sort of chemical reaction between the two ingredients and it actually isn't bad, but it'll turn green and definitely make your sauce not as appetizing. So live and learn from me and make sure that those keep nice and hot until you put your tomatoes in. Now my wine is not just for drinking, we're actually using it in this recipe. It's just a nice excuse. I've got a nice red wine here. You can really go with anything you want as long as you're willing to drink it. Whatever you do, do not get cooking wine. That's just wrong. The whole idea here is that we're gonna really cook out most of the alcohol and we're just getting the great flavor of the wine. So you wanna make sure that you love the flavor of it. So get whatever you want, have a glass of dinner, that's always nice, and we're gonna put in about a half a cup of this. This looks great. The wine is really giving it a nice, darker color and it's just really gonna add so much flavor. It's gonna make it a more interesting sauce. Next, I'm gonna add a small carrot that I've cut into four pieces, so I'm actually gonna fish out these pieces later. What I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of sugar. Some people like to add an actual tablespoon of sugar or something like that. I like to use carrots. Of all vegetables, they have the highest sugar content, and by cooking them in our sauce, it's gonna pull out all the sugar and give us just that balance that we need. So just cut up a carrot into a couple of big pieces and throw it in there. Finally, we're gonna do our last layer of seasoning. We're gonna do a little bit of pepper, a lot of salt. You can start off mild and taste a little bit later on, but you've got a giant pot of tomatoes here and they all need a lot of salt. So. I could estimate here, but I would just say put in a lot. Start off with maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, and then keep on tasting as you go and make sure that you've really got a good amount of salt in there. Finally, we're gonna add some crushed red pepper. Now this is all to taste. I like things really spicy, so I'm probably gonna put a half teaspoon, maybe even a full teaspoon. If you're not so sure about the spicy thing, start off slow, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, just kind of a dash of it. It is gonna be cooking in here for a long time, so it's gonna get spicier as it cooks. It's really gonna allow this spice to open up. So put a couple dashes in, keep on tasting, and you can really adjust it to whatever you like. Well, that is all she wrote. We wanna get this nice and stirred up. That looks great. I've got my heat down between medium and low. Just want to put my lid on about three quarters of the way, make sure some steam can still escape. And that's kind of it. You want to stir it every 10 minutes or so, and you just kind of want to wait until it starts to cook down, cooks off all that liquid, everything gets concentrated and beautiful. So grab your glass of wine, keep stirring, and I'll see you back here in a couple.
This is looking perfect. It's really starting to thicken up. It's been cooking for about 45 minutes. I did turn it to more of a medium just because my dinner time is getting closer and closer and I want to make sure it's done on time. So I've got about 30 minutes left that I want to cook this. At this point, I'm going to add about 20 leaves of basil. And for the record, I love basil. It's just my favorite herb. The smell, the taste, it's all good. So I'm going to roll these up, I'm going to chop them up, I'm going to get them into our sauce, and in about 30 minutes, we are going to have the most delicious marinara sauce that you have ever tasted. really coming along. However, I think it needs some more salt. It is so thick and delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, there's nothing better. Please make this, because once you make this, I'm telling you, you'll never get a jar of canned sauce again. And if you want, make a little extra, that way you have it in the freezer, and you can use it anytime, because this is delicious. 